Hey guys, what's going on? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 33 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today, I want to talk to you about 1602 Witch Hunter Angela. Uh, this is a four issue miniseries that is a tie in to the Secret Wars event from 2015. Uh, the story of that event is that you have a whole bunch of alternate realities that are all uh, combined into this super reality, and then Doctor Doom somehow becomes a god. And in this particular story, uh, Angela, she is a character who originally appeared in Spawn from Image Comics in the 1990s, and then uh, via a deal between Todd McFarlane and Neil Gaiman, who was the co creator of that character. Uh, the character was moved to Marvel Comics and so now uh, she's a Marvel Comics character and in this particular story uh, she and her lover Sarah they are hunters of witch breed which is the 1602 version of mutants and then at the beginning of this story they say okay now we're not gonna be hunting witch breed anymore we're going to be hunting people who make a deal with the devil and in this particular story the devil is the enchantress from the Thor comics and then uh, by the end of the story uh, enchantress uh, Angela is trying to save her lover Sarah and and then uh, she's able to defeat the Enchantress, but it's a hollow victory, and I'm not going to give any further spoilers on that. Uh, but by the end of the story, the day is saved, sort of, uh, but there's also a little bit of loss there as well. Um, this story is okay. Uh, the big thing that kept coming to me when I was reading this is that this does not even hold a candle to the original 1602. Uh, the original story I thought was really magnificent. It was just a thing of beauty. I really loved 1602 a lot. Uh, this just does not feel like it even belongs in the same league as that story. Uh, it feels like they're going through the motions. Uh, they're altering characters a little bit to fit into the early 17th century, just like the original story did, but this does not feel like the same kind of story. It doesn't have that same same magic to it that the original had. It feels very much like an imposter trying to be like 1602, and it just doesn't work. Uh, so it's an okay story. Uh, there's nothing very bad about it, but it doesn't really work as an homage or a follow-up to the original 1602 miniseries. Uh, another thing that really bothered me about this was there are like five different artists working on this miniseries, and this is only a four-issue miniseries. I really wish that they could have gotten one artist to do the art chores for the whole thing. Uh, it's very jarring for me when I'm reading a comic, and even in the same issue, you have an artist, and then you turn the page, and it's a new artist doing the art chores. Uh, that always takes me out of the story. I really wish for just a four issue miniseries that they could have gotten one artist to do the whole thing. Uh, it's one thing when you have an ongoing series, you obviously can't expect one artist to do the art chores forever, uh, but for a four issue mini, I think they could have gotten one artist. Uh, they didn't need as many artists as they had on this, uh, so that was something that kind of uh, took me out of the story a little bit. Uh, another thing that I found to be a little perplexing about this, and this may be something that only bothers some people and doesn't bother other people, but uh, the character of Angela, uh, she and her partner who helps her hunt down the witch breed, they are lovers. And if this was set in the year 2016, I wouldn't even bring this up at all. But this story is set in the year 1602. And while homosexuality did exist in the year 1602, people kept it very much on the down low. Uh, they weren't quite so open about it back then as they are today. And these characters, it feels like every other page, they are bringing up the fact that they are gay together. And it doesn't bother me, but it doesn't feel very authentic for the year 1602. And you may be saying, well, this is a story with demons and demon hunters and characters with super powers and none of that is authentic and you're right but my creative writing professor in college he used to talk about magic realism where you could have elements that don't exist in real life but they have to feel real to the author and to the audience and in this particular case you've got a story that is allegedly set in the year 1602 and these characters are pretty openly gay uh, it seems like everyone knows that they are and I feel like maybe this would have worked a little bit better if every time these two characters go into a town maybe they're pretending like they're sisters and then when they're alone together they can stop pretending and they say something like man that was really difficult I'm glad that we don't have to pretend anymore or something like that uh, if you want to see an example of what I'm talking about look at the original 1602 miniseries uh, spoiler for that story uh, where Angel of the X-Men it turns out that he's gay uh, for the character John Gray and then he later finds out that John Gray is actually a girl and then he says well I was interested in him when he was a boy and he's not very open about it uh, he only tells one character he's not going around telling everybody hey look at me I'm gay uh, kind of like these characters do and like I said 
if this was set in the year six, uh, 2016, 2017, whatever, uh, that wouldn't bother me. Uh, and it doesn't bother me as is. It's just a little odd, I think. Uh, but that was just a minor nitpick. I would say really my biggest gripe uh, is that this doesn't feel like a worthy successor of the original 1602 miniseries. Uh, and I also didn't like that there were so many artists uh, going around in this book. Uh, but overall, I thought it was a fine story. It's an okay uh, thing if you've got some money burning a hole in your pocket and you're interested interested in reading some of the uh, Battle World uh, minis, I guess is what they're calling them, Warzone minis, I think. Uh, if you're interested in reading some of that, then you could check this out. I know it seems like a very lukewarm recommendation, but it's not a bad story. It just didn't feel like a really great story to me uh, anyway. Uh, so those are my thoughts on uh, 1602 Witch Hunter Angela. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different graphic novel review. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day, and I will catch you later. Have a good one.